In this video, I'm going to show you how to make my autumn leaves cushion cover. It's ever so simple. Um, because I've used felt for the leaves, there isn't any hemming to do because, of course, felt, felt doesn't fray. Um, and although it's a simple envelope back cushion cover, it's all lined on the inside so you don't see any raw edges. So that's a technique that you're going to find really useful and quite impressive if you're going to give your cushion cover away or if you're going to sell anything that you're making as well. I've used free motion embroidery just to hold my leaves in place. If you're not a fan or if that's something that you haven't quite mastered yet, there's no reason why you couldn't hand sew these on. There's no reason why you couldn't use maybe a blanket stitch or some of the decorative stitches on your sewing machine, particularly if you've got a machine like mine, which is the Buttrick EB6100. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll uh, give you a list of the materials that you're going to need and how to measure your cushion cover so that it's going to fit your cushion pad perfectly. So this is how we do it. The first thing you need to do is to obviously choose your fabric, but choose the size of your cushion pad. I've chosen a rectangular one. Yours could be square, it really doesn't matter. Uh, mine measures 16 inches across by 13 inches deep. My fabric, and I've chosen this mustard coloured linen because it looks really autumnal, is going to measure half an inch larger. So I'm 16 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches. And that means with my quarter of an inch seam allowance, it brings the cover down to the same size as the pad, which makes it nice and plump. Make yours a little bit larger if you wanted your cushion to be a little bit flatter than mine. So those two pieces are going to make up the front of my cushion cover and then I'll need two pieces for the envelope style back of the cushion cover. These measure the same depth, that's 13 and a half inches for my cushion pad, but this time instead of the 16 and a half I've added another four inches. So these are 20 inches and you've got two of them, which means when I fold these over they're going to be slightly longer than halfway across. Now that doesn't have to be set in stone, you can have a big overlap or a small overlap. But by a general kind of rule of thumb, you want those to overlap by around about a third. So I've got a third here, a third of overlap, and a third at the side there. So put those to one side for a second. My leaves I've already cut out just in lots of um, autumnal coloured of felt. This is Corinne Lapierre's felt. It's lovely to work with. It's a viscose mix. Now because a lot of the colours of my leaves are going to be um, almost the same colour as the background, my leaves aren't going to stand out too much, which is fine if that's the kind of look that you wanted. But I want them to really stand out. So I've made another panel of fabric, and this is just from Calico, so it's really cheap fabric. And I've frayed the edges. I've got it smaller than my cushion pad, as you can see. And I've frayed all of the edges to give it a little bit of texture. And then when I put my leaves on top, they're really going to leap out. And it adds a little bit more interest to the cover as well. So let's put pad to one side, back to one side one of the front pieces to one side, because that's actually going to be the lining on the inside of the cushion. I'll just show you quickly how I cut these leaves out, because they're not from a pattern, they're not an exact size. I think you'll find that Mother Nature even can't create them exactly to the same size. So literally, all I've done is taken a few layers of felt, up to four pieces all in one go, and literally cut around, maybe add a bit of shape there, into a leaf shape. If you're not so confident in cutting out a perfect leaf shape um, first time, then you can always download something off the internet or trace on your PC monitor the shape of a leaf and cut those out. But again, remember they don't have to be all exactly the same size or indeed exactly the same shape. So let's put those to one side for now because I'm going to arrange these onto the front of my cushion pad before I start sewing. I'm not going to sew my frayed piece in place because I want, I want it to be loose, but I am going to hold it in place with a little bit of repositionable spray adhesive. So that's just a little bit of 505, and that's going to sit squarely in the center. If you're using this technique, you could have this off-center, you could have it twisted around to a diamond shape. You can measure, if you wish, if you're not too sure again about putting that perfectly centrally, but I think that's going to be fine for my cushion cover. Now, I'm not going to spray onto the back of the felt, so it's going to go all over the place. And sometimes with felt, it can kind of grip onto the glue, so you can see it. So I'm going to use a glue stick. You can pin if you wanted to. You don't have to hold these in place if you don't want to. And I'm literally going to randomly add my leaves, all different colours. So I've got 
light greens, dark greens, oranges and reds. And some of them are actually going to overlap around the edge of my, um, my frayed panel to hold it in place. And I want these to look as though they're falling, or they've fallen. So again, maybe different sizes mixed together. From the top corner, I'm just going to have a few, uh, literally as if they're all falling down into a big pile at one side. You could make them into the shape of a tree, that would be quite nice. And the red ones, particularly, if we're moving on from autumn and into Christmas time, why not arrange these all together in a circle? And then you've got a poncettia, how's that? Just put a few beads in the center and maybe a couple of leaves behind there. But oh, we're getting onto the wrong season. We're talking about autumn in this one. <coughs> Do it. Excuse me. Okay. So just a few leaves falling here. I think that looks really good so far. Um, what I'll do is free motion embroider some of the leaves in shape, first of all. Do you know, I don't think I'm going to add two more to that. Um, if your leaves are going to overlap like mine are, then I'm going to sew all of these in place first of all, and then put my second layer of leaves on the top. And that means that my embroidery stitches from the first set are all going to sit underneath, so it actually looks dimensional. So I'm not going to overlap those at the moment. Just thinking what to do with all of these extra leaves. And I'm thinking maybe on, on, a, on a string or a piece of cord and make some kind of leaf garland out of them would be nice. That's a whole other project. So let's put you to one side for now. Now I'm using my Buttrick EB6100. I put my darning plate on there so the feed dogs aren't going to work. And the free motion foot, which comes with the sewing machine, is already fitted. And I'm embroidering in black because I really like these outlines to stand out. So put your foot down. I'm going to choose to start and stop with a needle in the down position. And then literally move my fabric underneath the needle and outline all of those leaves. I'm just going to cut off that long strip that's in the way there. And if your line's um, a little bit wobbly, don't worry about that, because when you go over this two or three times, it actually starts to look deliberate. I've just caught the back end of my felt there, so let's move it out of the way. And away we go. So as fast or as slow as you like. Outline as many times if you like. You can use the same colour of thread if you prefer to, if you like your thread to be that little bit more invisible. You could do kind of a stem down the centre of each one of the pieces and, um, and do veins in the leaves. I'm not going to for this one. I'm going to keep it nice and plain. You can be very accurate with this method. I like the scribbly kind of look, so I'm, I'm, I'm not too accurate. And for those of you that are impatient or think that you're not very artistic, this is a great technique for you as well, because you don't need to be, and it's very quick. OK, so I'll just carry on until all of those leaves are embroidered. <laughs> That's the dog having a play, if you wonder. It's not my hips squeaking. Okay, around we go. Just missed a little bit there. Bobbin, that's not really appropriate, is it? Now she'll think it's a game. Told you. Okay, so that's my leaves for now. So let's cut away these long in between the bits. And then I'll put another few leaves on top. 
And then I am aware that this isn't held down at all, and that's quite a large area. So I'm going to draw around some leaf shapes and literally embroider straight onto the fabric just to give it um, a different, different kind of look. So that's there. And then we'll have some of these, the glue stick. Need a few more green ones, I think. Just overlapping here, so it, it really looks like a big pile of leaves. Maybe an orange over here. And we'll have another yellow one. Just there. Whoops. There we go. And again, just in the same way, I'll embroider around the edge of these. If you're going to go over with quite a few layers of felt, it might be an idea to use a denim needle. And um, those are a little bit stronger, so they'll cope with heavier weights of fabric and thicknesses of fabric, of course, as well. Two more, and then we'll do a bit of drawing. It's quite a nice technique as well if you are new to free motion embroidery and you do make a mistake. There's always the opportunity to just put another leaf over the top of your wonky stitches. Looking good. Let's tidy the back up a little bit. Okay. You can also have a practice on some scrap fabric first of all if you are brand new to this kind of technique and just kind of uh, have a practice and get used to it. Right, so I'm going to just draw the outline of a couple of leaves, maybe some smaller ones, so they look as though they're in the distance up here. And that's purely to hold the fabric down. And I'm going to need another one over this side. If you wanted to, you could just have sewn a border around so you don't need to do this. But I like, um, I like doing something that's a little bit different. Things look better in threes, don't they? I'll do them in threes. Okay. Oh, my pen, by the way, was um, a friction pen. Whenever you use a friction pen on fabric, please do a little test patch first, because particularly on printed fabrics, um, they can sometimes bleach the fabric. And the ink can sometimes come back again as well. So it's, uh, it's, uh, they're great pens and they're great, I find, on fabrics like this. But again, it, particularly if you've spent a lot of money on your fabric, so you've spent a lot of time on your project, you don't want it being spoiled by seeing pen marks. Over to the other side. run out of bottom thread. That's the only thing with um, free motion embroidery, it does tend to use a lot of thread, so I'll just put a little bit more on here. I thought you'd forgotten about that one, Bobbin. Okay, 
So just those three little leaves to do here. My decoration is done. I'll iron it later on, so that'll take away the um, the iron marks. We'll do that just before I finish. So just snip off all of those long bits, the jump threads as the core between one section and the next. Oops. So that is my applique finished. It's quite fun, isn't it? It's nice and bold and bright and happy. Okay, so let's put our regular foot, or the zigzag foot, the standard foot, back onto the sewing machine. If you're going for this sewing machine, you do have um, your screwdriver included and your darning plate, and the free motion embroidery foot's included in there as well. So you can get oh, you can get on with this straight away. Things are jumping around everywhere today. Um, and I'm also going to change the colour of my thread because I'm going to put the cushion cover together now. So I'm going to go for a yellow thread. The top, down the bottom, foot down. I love a needle thread. I'd never buy a sewing machine without a needle thread these days. Let's pull that one up to the top. See how quick it is to change colours as well. And I just need to put the regular foot back on again. Screw that into the side. screwdriver. There. And we are ready to go. So let me show you what I'm doing first of all. It's ever so easy. No zips or anything involved in this one. Leaf galling for later on with those ones. So I'm going to put my two folded pieces for the, for the back face down on top of the applique work that I've just made. So folded in half and overlapping. Okay, so I have a few pins just to hold that in place. And then I'm going to sew, not all the way around at the moment, I'm just going to sew down one side. And remember I'm using my quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just shorten my stitch slightly. So you need to run about two and a half. then the next piece, these pins can actually come out now, but don't let your fabric move. Your next rectangle of fabric is going to go straight over the top of the first. So the envelope section is literally sandwiched in the center. I'm not pinning too close to the edge of this because I don't want to sew over the pins. That's the folded bit in the centre.
you find this easier actually to sew from the other side as well. And I shall show you why. Because that line that you've already started sewing, that's where you're going to start and stop your stitches from when you start sewing on this side. So let's start right over where those stitches were. Reverse backwards. And I'm going to sew down this end first, just because I find it easier to do that. And then I'm going to sew all the way around from the back of my fabric. You can sew all the way around from this side if you like. But the reason I like to do it from this side is because I know that, I, well, I can see the, the edge of the fabric. I can see that that is absolutely square. So I've got a gap, basically, in my in the side of the lining. A very nosy dog. Right, coming down into the corner, I'm going to leave the needle in the down position and then turn this around. I am working with linen, so it does tend to, to move a little bit. So keeping lots of pins around there to keep everything flat as I'm sewing. Okay, around here, back into the corner. Needle in the down position, one more stitch there. Now, the, it does use quite a lot of fabric doing it this way because you're putting a lining inside there. But if you're making a cushion cover that you're going to give away or you're going to sell, it's quite nice that you don't see any of those stitches on the inside. Uh, sorry, any of the raw edges on the inside. And this technique means that you don't, which is fantastic. Right, that's done. So let's chop off the end of the thread. We don't need you anymore. Take out the pins. So, and then I'm just going to snip across the corners of the, the seam and that'll help to reduce the amount of bulk on the, those corner sections so I, I get nice pointy points when I turn this the right side out. Now then, let's turn this through that hole that I left. Like so. And you may be wondering where all of your applique has gone and if it's actually worked and if you're doing it right. Don't worry, you will have done. Uh, this hole can be sewn up by hand and you could use um, a little tiny over edge stitch, you could use a ladder stitch if you prefer to. You're not really going to see this stitch, it's on the inside of the cushion cover, so don't worry too much about that being absolutely perfect. I should do that later. And then turn the whole thing inside out again, or well, the right side out again I should say, push the corners out. Flip over this side. Push the corners out. And there is your autumnal cushion cover. And the nice thing is, if anybody does look on the inside, or again, if you're selling this, you don't see any raw edges. The seams are finished perfectly on the inside as well. another moment of truth. Let's see if it fits. Actually, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't. I wouldn't uh, with feather pillows, to be honest, because the feathers will go all over the place. But if you're using a, a hollow fibre um, stuffed pillow, you can also take a little bit of the stuffing out if you find that your cushion cover is a little bit too small. And if you find that your cushion cover is a little bit too big, you can always put some um, toy filler inside there, just into the corners to pad that out a little bit. But that cushion cover looks to fit perfectly. Enjoy making yours. <laughs>